The Wizard of Oz is set to be one of the most popular films ever created, but behind the scenes, the things that were happening were nothing but cruel, disturbing, and dangerous. Filled with horrific acts towards a then 16-year-old Judy Garland, unsafe work conditions, all the way down to death. So what exactly happened when the camera wasn't rolling and how did the predators of that time get away with committing such heinous acts? To understand all of this, we have to rewind back to 1938 when the film was being created. Actors and workers didn't have much rights, a lot of things were swept under the rug and you pretty much had to do anything and everything the producer told you in order to keep your job. All of these individuals were affected by this one way or another with the worst one being the main star of the film. But first, let's take a look at the tragedies that the Wicked Witch had to endure. Margaret Hamilton actually caught on fire while filming. In the scene where the witch was to make a dramatic fiery exit from Munchkinland, the trapdoor she was supposed to escape from didn't open fast enough, causing her to be engulfed in flames. Margaret suffered second degree burns to her face and third degree burns to her hands, but it gets even worse. The makeup they were using contained copper, which is highly toxic. So during the whole fire fiasco, instead of immediately getting medical attention for the burns, they had to tend to the makeup first and ensure that none of it went inside her open wounds and enter her bloodstream. Cause if it did, she could have died. Now, speaking of makeup, the Tin Man suffered serious health consequences because of his. Originally, Buddy Epson was casted to play the role of Tin Man, but after only 9 days of filming, he was hospitalized due to lung failure. Turns out the makeup used for his costume contained aluminum powder which caused him to have an allergic reaction. Subsequently, he was replaced by Jack Haley to play that role and the aluminum based makeup was changed to paste instead. But that didn't seem to matter cause Jack suffered an eye infection which forced him to undergo surgery to prevent permanent damage. The Scarecrow didn't have an easy time either. Ray Bolger, the actor who was casted for that role, was forced to wear a heavy tight rubber mask which almost suffocated him on several occasions. Not to mention he was left with deep lines in his face for over a year courtesy of the mask's texture. But things didn't end there. The straw-like Scarecrow had several close run-ins with fire. And to combat any mishaps, they had to fill his costume up with asbestos. In fact, this wasn't the only time asbestos was used. The witch's broom contained it as well. Also, the snow that covered the poppy field and fell all over Dorothy and her friends was made up of 100% asbestos. Now, let's talk about Judy Garland for a bit. The things done to her behind the scenes were so bad that there's no doubt in anyone's mind this was the catalyst for her young death at the age of 47. Judy was constantly told she was too fat and needed to lose weight. She was given amphetamines and the MGM studio boss even put her on a strict diet of chicken soup, black coffee and 80 cigarettes a day to curb her appetite. They even loaded her up with adrenaline shots daily to give her that extra pep and forced sleeping pills on her at night to help her sleep. The treatment got even darker cause during the scene where Dorothy slaps the lion, Judy couldn't stop herself from giggling on set. I mean it's only common. Many actors accidentally crack up laughing here and there while filming, but the director of the movie Victor Fleming wasn't having any of that. So he took her to the side and gave her a big slap. From there, she was nailing her scenes in one take. In 2005, Sid Luff, Judy's ex-husband exposed further details of what happened to her backstage, saying she was constantly groped by the actors that played the munchkins, simply because they thought they could get away with anything because they were so small. And it didn't just stop at the munchkins, because allegedly, the studio executives had committed horrible assaults towards her as well. It's also worth noting that because Judy was a woman, and at that time females weren't taken seriously in show business, she was only paid $500 a week, as opposed to the Scarecrow and Tin Man who were paid $3,000 a week. Considerably low, especially because Dorothy was the protagonist of the film. Now, the munchkins were so bad and hard to work with that MGM was forced to assign someone to watch over them at all times. But regardless, some of those actors ended up getting arrested between shoots. Not to mention they were underpaid as well. 
they only received $50 a week, less than half the amount of any actor that played in the movie. And this includes the dog Toto, who was making $125 a week in comparison. Anyways, the cowardly lion was forced to wear a costume that's said to have weighed almost 100 pounds, making it extremely difficult for actor Burt Lahr to maneuver and dance around for his scenes. The costume was also crafted out of real lion skin and fur, and when we factor in the heavy studio lights heating up the set to insane temperatures, Burt's costume would always be drenched in sweat, giving off a horrendous smell. Now that's not even the end of it. In the scene where the flying monkeys appear and soup up Dorothy and Toto, several of the actors' piano wires used for the stunts snapped, causing those individuals to come crashing down to the ground and get seriously injured. It's safe to say that if any of these horrific incidents occurred in today's day and age, the victims would rightfully sue and seek compensation. But none of those actors did such a thing back in those times because if they did, they would be blacklisted from ever getting any more roles in the future. 